Hey, Matt. Hi, Doug. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was such a funny question. <laughs> I just had like multiple emergency things from Dan, mainly around going to index suddenly. So <sighs> nice. I assume you are going, right? Now I am. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize you weren't going before. Interesting. Hmm. Are you uh, doing a presentation there or just going to help out? Apparently I'm going to help out. I don't know what capacity other than be present in relevant sessions and workshops. Uh, okay. Yeah. Last week it was kind of like, I'll let you know if Alex wants you to go and uh, we sent somebody from my team to help out in a workshop and then suddenly it's not good. I had to submit a TEA within five minutes or, whatever, or Alex wants to within five minutes. Huh. All right. Hello, Chris. Hi. I apologize for not remembering, but what company are you from? Oh, I'm actually, this is the first time I'm going. I'm actually uh, from the Linux Foundation. Ah, OK. Do you want me to add you to the regular roster? And I am the ED of the JS Foundation. Having a chat with. Uh, Chris and he uh, this call came up. The server was okay. You're you're cutting out really really badly unless it's my end. But I think I heard I think I heard most of it. Do you think you'll be joining us on a regular basis, Chris? Chris, can you hear me? Matt, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear. I'm some mute. Okay, I think I think the problem might be on Chris's end then. Nope. I see two. I see two Chris's now. <laughs> Can you hear me? I, I can now, yes. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, was, no uh, problem. I'm driving to a meeting. I just got in my car, so I lost the Wi Fi, so I lost the connection. <laughs> okay. Not a problem. I'm just curious, do you think you'll be planning? I mean, do you think you'll be attending on a regular basis? Uh, I think so, or at least until um, I get a feeling I may have some others jumping in my place. But um, yeah, I mean, we're. We're starting to get pretty involved in a few different aspects of serverless from like the application developer side. So I was just chatting with Chris and he suggested I jump in the meeting. So I'll mostly be listening for now, but we'll see if I can okay. add anything. Cool. Okay, that's cool. Just wanted to check. I'll add you to the regular roster then. Okay. Hey, Steve-O. I apologize Hi. for the typo. No, no problem. I got to get names wrong one way or another. If I mispronounce it or mistype it, I'll do something. Just mess it up every time. Hey, Sarah. Ben, um, are you new to the call? Yes, good morning. Uh, hi. hi, my name is uh, Ben Hartshorn. I am calling in from Honeycomb. Hello. Um, do me a favor, spell your last name. Sure, that's H A R T S H O R N E. Okay, I'm probably sure I missed it up. And how do you spell oh, honeycomb? That's right. 
Oh. Uh, with a B on the end, everything else is right. Thank you. Uh, no E. Oh, no E. Should have known. Sorry. There we go. Thank you. Uh, and we're at honeycomb.io. Okay. Just out of curiosity, you can attend on a regular basis? Uh, I have gotten an invitation uh, and it was like, hey, you know, you should uh, check it out and I think you can contribute. Um, but I don't know if I actually can. So uh, if, if this is, uh, if it turns out that yes, I can, I would love to. Excellent. Well, welcome to the group. Thank you. The answer to Ben's question is yes, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Sweet. Uh, and hey there, Austin. Hey, Doug. How you doing? Pretty good. You know, I did have a question. Um, I couldn't find a link to these uh, meeting minutes docs in the GitHub repo. Uh, I'm wondering if that's uh, uh, on purpose or if it's an omission. Yeah, we like to keep these things secret. No, I'm just joking. Um, uh, I'll, I'll fix that oversight today. Thank you very much for mentioning it. Excellent. Thanks. Yeah, so where I'll put that something. Tell you what, I'll add it to the AI list for myself. I also, if you search for CNCF serverless uh, working group, serverless WG, you'll find them. You know, I, I was spending time on the train this morning looking for cloud events working group. Uh, and uh, Google was, was not my friend in that. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, add that for the search term next time. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. It, it's at the bottom of the um, GitHub repo, the README. There's a link to meeting minutes. Yeah, I always forget what that repo name is because it's not the serverless dash working group. It's WG dash serverless. Doug, what's the asterisks in your domain? That confirms that I've actually heard your voice. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so thank you. And I got Sarah in there. So uh, Joanne from SAP. Like a two-phase authentication or something? Exactly. So Joanne, jo Johannes, jo I'm, I'm going to apologize. Joanne from SAP, are you there? Yes, here I am. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, Arun. From, SA, from AWS. I'm here, two-factor authentication. Excellent, thank you. And I did hear Dan in there, so thank you, Dan. Yeah, you didn't give me a four-digit pin code, but I mean. All right, Kathy, are you there? We'll get started in about a minute or so. We've got a fairly big agenda here. Um, please add your name to the uh, attendee list if you have not done so already. There it is again. Mark, I got you. Actually, Mark, you there? I am. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, okay. Too many people are joining for me to keep track of this. Maybe, maybe someone else can. <clears throat> but in about a minute or so, we'll, we'll do roll call and then we'll keep going. Whoa, why are my typing's getting worse these days? <laughs> All right, tell you what, let's start doing some roll call. Get this out of the way. Uh, Kathy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent, thank you. And Dan, Rosa, Rosa Nova? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Jim Curtis? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Uh, Joe? Okay. That's Johannes. Johannes. Oh, I'm sorry. God, I do that every time, don't I? Sorry. William from Red Hat. Yep, I'm here. All right. Baram? Baram? Yep, here. Sorry. Excellent. Thank you. And David Lyle? <coughs> Here. Uh, Edith? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Uh, David Baldwin? David, are you there? Okay. What about Michael P? I see that David's person. Here. Sorry, I had a new oh, problem. David. Excellent. Okay. And David P? 
Okay. Um, Hong Zhang? Hong, are you there? Okay, <clears throat> we'll circle back around later. Um, so let's move this where you guys can see my screen, right? Yep. 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 All, right. All right, cool. So uh, don't necessarily spend a whole lot of time. <clears throat> Actually, let me back up. Are there any uh, uh, changes to the agenda that you would like to make? Okay. Um, just a quick reminder of the AIs. I think, Austin, you have two. Uh, uh oh, someone's adding a new one for you. You're adding one for yourself. That's nice. So just yeah. a reminder, Austin, you got, you got two in there, and I got one added myself. So we don't need to go over them. Just a nagging reminder. Sorry, I was muted. I, I proposed a something under MISC stuff to review the terms. Then. Um, yeah, I think I added that down here. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Yep, not a problem. Although if we have new people, it might help introduce yeah. what we're doing. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's see. Next step, white paper. I have no updates since last week, so I assume the uh, the Linux Foundation guys are still doing their reviews and edits and stuff. I'll I'll try to remember to ping them later today. But I haven't officially heard anything from them. Uh, just a couple of miscellaneous things I wanted to cover. Um, some of them are more process oriented than anything else. Just want to remind people that <clears throat> we do strongly encourage everybody, whether you're formerly part of the working group or just lingering, uh, to comment on issues and pull requests and stuff like that. That's how we're going to gauge whether a pull request is ready to be merged or not, or come up for, in essence, a review on the, one of these calls. Um, the more LGTMs it gets, the better chance of it gets merged. So please comment as best you can. Obviously, if you have a change you'd like to see in there, try to get it in there sooner rather than later. The sooner you get it in there, the sooner you can get fixed, and then we can get it merged. Um, if there's an issue that you'd like to actually work on and own, go ahead and put some comment in there indicating that. Um, I'm partial to this hashtag dibs thing. Uh, hold on just a sec. There's a lot of background noise. I start muting some people. Oh, I can't mute people. So if you can go on mute, I'd appreciate it. Um, so just as I said, just put some sort of comments inside the issue and I'll mark it as a, as a sign so people know that someone is working on it. And I will also add an assign to somewhere in the top comments so people know who's working on it and then I just lost sound in case anybody else did as well. Yeah, I think I lost yeah. Doug. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I think Doug. <laughs> did Doug hear himself? Um, I still hear nothing on my end. Can anyone hear anything? Yeah, I can't hear anything. Can't hear Doug. I can hear everybody else. Yeah, can't hear Doug. Yeah, it looks like you just dropped. I'm trying to get him on Slack. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, so I apologize. I don't know what happened. I got dropped. Let me go back. Do, 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 do. Okay, so you can still see my screen, I assume? Yes. Okay, so did I start off, or did you lose me during the middle of my Git stuff? Or where did you go? So. Okay. Right we lost okay. you at dibs. Dibs. Wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> okay, so... Um, if you want to work on an issue and it doesn't look like it's been assigned to anybody else, just please go ahead and mark it as dibs or put a comment in there with dibs or some other type of comment, just so I know that you want to work on it. And I will add your name to the assigned to uh, point that I'll add to the first comment in the issue, to, just so people know who's working on it and then they can join in the fun if they want to. Um, if you want your GitHub ID 
in the attendance tracker so people know who you are and they could poke you through GitHub issues or PRs and stuff. Let me know if you don't want it listed here and I listed it by mistake, let me know and I'll remove it. Um, I have to do either one. And finally, it seemed like people were having issues with Git and I'm not a GitHub expert um, or a Git expert, but I believe this covers some of the stuff people are running into. In particular, make sure that in your Git client <clears throat> that you have your user.name and user.email set appropriately. Um, I don't think this has to be your full name, but we really would appreciate it if it was your full name. Um, actually, this, the DCO might actually require full names, I'm not 100% sure. But either way, we would really appreciate it to put your full name there so we know who's actually signing the, uh, the commits. And then, so if you do a git config global dash L, if, you know, make sure it shows up correctly. Then when you do your git commit, if you include the dash S on there, it'll automatically sign it. And then when you look in the git log for your commit, you should see the author and the signed off tag match. If they do not match, I think the DCO checker will flag it as an error and it won't let your PR get merged. So I think, that, I think those are the problems that people were running into recently with PRs and stuff. It's basically not setting these things properly and then not using the dash S on the commit. Okay. Doug, can we put that in the contributing document? Uh, yes, that's a good idea. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll take the AI to do that. Thank you. Okay, any questions on any of those points under the miscellaneous stuff? All right, not hearing any. Hopefully that was mildly useful. Okay, so let's do PR review here. Now, keep in mind as we go forward here, um, we're not looking for NSA perfection. We just wanna make sure we keep moving forward. And so hopefully we can go through these relatively quickly. Austin, you wanna quickly bring us up to speed on this initial use case PR? Sure. Um, to better explain what we're doing and why we're doing it, uh, we decided to take a lead on drafting out some use cases for the cloud event specification um, right from the beginning to help guide our efforts. And this is a first pass at those use cases. Um, you know, it's not final by any means, but it's, uh, it's a start. Uh, could it be reworded uh, better? Probably. Are there a whole bunch of use cases that aren't in here? Absolutely. Um, but this is just to get the ball rolling. Uh, there's probably five of them in there right now. And everyone is welcome to contribute to add use cases. I think we should optimize this whole repo so that um, all types of people from all walks of life can contribute use cases because it gives us a really good signal as to kind of what we need to accommodate with the specification. Um, but check it out. It's uh, only a paragraph or two for each use case. Very, very simple. Um, you know, if we agree on these, we can start adding in maybe some diagrams and stuff to make it a little bit clear. Yep, okay, thank you, Austin. And the key point there is this is just a starting point. It's not meant to be the final thing. Obviously, we're yep. follow on PRs for everything we do here. So are there any comments or questions or concerns with this one going in? It seems like it's been there for a while without any comment. There's- It's got a bunch of LGTMs. Yep. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a few of them in there that just have titles. So I, I, they're proposed use cases. People can go ahead and um, fill in descriptions for them. Uh, Mark already came in and filled in one for policy enforcement, which I thought was really great. So thanks for that, Mark. Yep. All right. Is there any objection to merging this one then? All right, we shall merge it, thank you. All right, next one. I'm going to jinx it here by saying it's easy, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> okay, this one was mine. I just noticed that this paragraph was um, going over the 80 columns thing. So I fixed it in a couple of places, just this paragraph and this spot down here. And then actually, I think um, this actually may be a duplicate from another PR. Uh, th th this was missing a new line here. So this is strictly a syntactical fix. Any comments, questions? Straightforward. Yep. Any objections to merging that one? Go for it. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Okay, next. 39. Whose is this? This is mine. Um, oh, this is just re removing the notes or to do's that were left in the spec from the previous um, draft. Uh, the reason it's okay to remove these now, oh, and the, uh, the backlog stuff. 
um, is because uh, per the AIs that we had on last week's call, we now have issues for every one of the to-dos and every one of these backlog attributes so that we can discuss those. And so since they're up for discussion, it makes sense to remove them from the spec for now, and then we can add them back in or resolve the issues for, for the to-dos uh, the, as, those, as those issues are resolved. So any discussions or questions on this? Okay. Any objection to approving that one? No objections on, on my end. I think this is, uh, this is better. It's going to make the spec um, smaller, more concise, and then all those proposed backlog items need to be in a format where they could be discussed. So all this makes sense. Yep. All right. Thank you much. All right. Next one is number 15. This one it takes the first pass at adding the RFC keywords. And for those of you who don't live and die by specifications, the RFC keywords are the, you know, must, shoulds, mays, and those kind of things. It just, it did not attempt to change uh, the, the semantics of anything. It was just in a first attempt to start using the keywords. And, and there were some cases where like here, where we had to remove uses. So I changed out must with R because um, must, whether it's uppercase or lowercase does matter. Uh, I'm sorry, it does not matter. It still is gonna be normative. So we had to make sure we remove them where we didn't actually mean to use it. Um, this one has been out there for quite some time. I don't think I made any changes. Um, so let me ask if there are any questions or comments on this one before I go for uh, approval. So yeah, I had um, addressed some comments, but I think that you've addressed everything that I um, brought up. Yes, I did. All right. Uh, in that case, is there any objection to approval to that one? Excellent. Thank you very much. And just so then you know, just just in the interest of full transparency, if um, if one of these that we're merging today uh, causes a rebase of one of the other ones uh, that we did approve, if, as long as the rebase is strictly syntactical in nature, I'm going to go ahead and do the rebase and merge it. Um, it's only if it changes something that I'm going to pause on the on the merge and and bring it back up for people to review. So you don't have to worry about something slipping in. It's strictly syntactical things will will not go through review. If that's okay. And Sarah, were you going to say something in there? Yeah, Sarah, were you going to say something? I thought I heard you. I just said yay. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that was a big one because that's going to cause a lot of merge conflicts uh, if we wait too much longer. Okay, Austin, number four is yours. You want to bring everybody to speed on this one? Sure thing. Um, this actually has two things happening in this pull request, which I don't think was the best approach in retrospective, but. Uh, its uh, first goal was to add a basic description to the README, because uh, right now when you go to the README of the spec repo, um, there's not much there. So this adds a basic description of what we're doing and why we're doing it, and kind of how to get involved. Um, so there, and the other part of this is to take a first pass at a roadmap um, to kind of help guide our efforts. And the roadmap kind of just looks out to May uh, when the Cloud Native Con Europe uh, conference is. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty bare bones, simple roadmap. Um, you know, I was chatting with Sarah about this the other day, and I think we have some optimizations uh, or some, some improvements we could make to this roadmap. Um, but I think we could possibly merge this in right now and then follow up with another PR to, to better improve this roadmap. What, what do you think about that, Sarah? Yeah, I'd be up for it. I think it, it, it says something, it's, I, I'm not opposed. It's like sort of, it's directionally correct, um, you know, and then we can sort of fine tune our process. Yes, we were- Personally, we, I'm fine with it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Sarah and I were chatting about possibly not doing this by month, but instead just kind of doing these by versions. Like version 0 0.1 should have, you know, basic specification and use cases included. You know, uh, 0 0.2 might have some, uh, like a library or supporting tool, something like that. So I think that'll um, be best uh, presented to everybody here as a separate paper. Yeah, I also also thinking that if we could have like sort of named or numbered milestones, then we could collect GitHub issues along this, you know, like we could tag things and it would be easier to kind of aggregate things if we had um, those kind of milestones. Yes, that's right. All right. 
As I said in the chat, I like the phrase directionally correct. That's what we're shooting for I here. think we can merge this and we'll, we'll follow yeah. up with some enhancements. Uh, yep. All right, any questions or comments for Austin? Or concerns? Okay, any objection to merging? Excellent, all right. Hold on, my machine is acting up again. Jeez. There we go, sorry. All right, next one. Uh, I can't remember, oops. Who owns this one? Yeah, that was me, this is Louis Fourie. Oh, hello, you wanna yeah. talk us through this one? Essentially the change from the term resource uh, to source in the spec. Typographically, very straightforward. <laughs> Any questions or comments on this? Is there any objection to merging this one? I think when we determined, when we settled on resource, um, looking back to those conversations, I think, I can't remember, I think, I think Google was a fan uh, of resource. I think it was uh, Thomas, was, it, was this yeah. something that you felt was important? So I was pushing for using the type of resource that is common in Istio, which has a name, a server, and a type, as well as labels, which we did not include. Um, I'm much more concerned about like where possible we should reuse data types and that we should call it just ambiguously by its type. There's going to be two resources, the source and the destination anyways. I know in our first discussions also, this is Dan, that we had a concern about source being is that the initial sender of the event is that some router in between um, that I mean source can be you know where in the upstream is source a reference to yeah in our private conversations uh, within Google we had worried about that a lot um, we had even you know temporarily con considered having like a stack of some sort uh, we decided to for now scope it just to the original sender of the event and that actually observed the occurrence and we would possibly add some type of place for middleware later, uh, just because the ergonomics of actually using a stack all the time would just be completely unusable. Yeah. So one, of the, one of the internal systems uh, that we have, which is event-driven, we use the word origin to indicate where the event is coming from. Well, you could use the term producer as well. There's a number of different terms that would be useful. But yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely fine as the person who suggested resource having something other than source. Um, I just uh, will come back later at some point probably and suggest that um, we have the shape of things that, that this is referring to look like other systems, especially ones within the CNCF. Yeah, Doug is also, you're wrong. I think uh, resource is very ambiguous doesn't tell you anything, you know, is it the, it's the destination, the source, something in between? Yeah, so, so this refers to the, where the events come from, right? Or, if, so either origin or source would make more sense than a resource. Yeah, I think source makes sense, you know, it's because this is where the event comes from, right? The, the source of the events. Yeah, I think that I do think that there I had forgotten that whole discussion that there's this like, like there's a common use case where um, the the event is actually from a service that is getting a request from elsewhere. Um, and so it's like this, in this context, what we're saying is the source is the thing that generates the event, but then it, it might actually the, the um, the data that is in the event might represent something that happened before that, um, to Thomas's point. And um, so I'm curious, Thomas, whether you think that like, would it be okay? Like, do you think we could use the word source for this? And then later we could add origin to mean, I, I don't know who else was speaking before, whether you were saying this is okay because we could reserve the word origin to mean the original or place or whether you thought that that was <laughs> It, it's your honor. I think uh, also, Sarah, we had the chat on that. I think there is a distinction between the protocol aspect and the message aspect. So uh, a message has an origin or a source. A protocol may have a source IP or something else, you know, and the protocol may have multiple legs. 
you know, so maybe the message goes through HTTP, transverse to Kafka and moves to Kinesis. In each one of those segments, there'll be a different source destination, IP address, and you know, other protocol specific semantics, topic names, etc. Uh, but there's only one source to the message. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's actually one of the reasons why I think uh, if we were to change the name, the, the uh, suggestion for origin actually seemed fairly clear to me because that would be the thing that we'd want to forward is that, no, 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 this came from that database, not from Kafka. Right, but maybe we do need a distinction around the protocol metadata uh, versus the message metadata because the protocol is only the carrier of the message. So the Kafka, you know, sort of a source topic or, you know, port number or whatever, you know, is not necessarily part of the message. It's part of the transfers that deliver the event message. So, so if, if it helps, where, where we use uh, the word origin, it's used to indicate uh, the component that's generating the message, like if it's billing APR, checkout service, it's the, actually the, the domain name of the component. That's what we put in the origin field. So I think what I'm hearing is we don't necessarily have agreement on this yet. Right? Actually, let me ask a more pointed question. So Thomas, um, would you object to changing it to source right now and with a potential change later, or would you rather have some more offline discussions first? I am absolutely not tied to the idea resource. I think um, what I'm hearing is that we're not clear actually how this thing should be used. And I think if we figure out exactly which server that this is referring to, the name will fall out of it. Well, actually, I think that I think the discussion is that we know what this means. It means the thing that generated the event, and we're not sure what, what to call it because something might be generating an event because it observed something that happened elsewhere, but we still want to know who generated the event or the, what piece of software was like, I created this bit of data. Isn't that a very specific uh, edge case? And we can make that a problem of whoever is actually generating the event, as in. Yeah, I'll give you an example here. Let's assume we have an API gateway that have a sort of a URL and drives a function. Is the source the source IP of the guy that generated the HTTP request, or is the source the sort of the path resource, you know, if you're thinking about Amazon API gateway? Which one of those is this source slash resource? So does that text that I've highlighted on there on line 172, does that help answer that question? This describes a software instance that emitted the event at runtime. Right, but is the software instance the client Angular JS, you know, thing uh, in the client uh, browser, or is that thing is the API gateway that intercepted the HTTP message and passed it for it? Well, I think it depends on whether that um, the Angular thing actually created a cloud event or whether it did something else that the API gateway is then generating an event. I mean, it's sort of semantics, but I mean, I do think at some point you're like, okay, now I'm starting to use cloud events versus. I don't think that necessarily cloud events have to report the events that were generated in a cloud event protocol because it may serve, serve proxy for traditional events. Right, but then I think if, if basically what you're building is a proxy, you can decide that your source is somebody before you, right? Okay. Yeah, I subscribe to that view. Yeah. In, in this case, the API gateway generates the cloud event, but says that I'm not the origin of source, it's the Angular app who is the origin. Yeah, so the question is, is it possible, you know, the fact that it comes from Angular app, is there any way of knowing that, uh, you know, if, if some, HTTP event arrives at a gateway. Is there any way of knowing what its source is, um, and then, you know, translating that into a specific value here in in the source? Oh, in okay. some cases it would be easy, but in some cases it would be very difficult to find that out. Yeah. Right. Is, is this an inferred field, or is this like a a given field? So is it like the, is the source going to like you know fill this field for us, or is this going to be an inferred field? This is actually a so this is something, so my understanding was that the piece of software that is generating, the, like that is 
building this data would, would fill that in based on its identity or its descriptor or like, you know, however it wants to identify itself, scoped by the namespace, and let's not talk about the namespace question, um, that, and that like, if that piece of software believes itself to be a proxy, like then it has some interpretation of what the source is, but it would fill that in, right? And then if, if this message, if this event is then sent along and it goes through a bunch of hops, right? Like that the transport wouldn't touch this field, field otherwise it's creating a new event. Right. It's like a different thing, which of course yeah, it, can, I, it can manufacture, like, I mean, we haven't talked about like security, like, if you don't, have, if you don't have a secure tra transport, all bets are off. Anybody can make up anything, right? So it's like, what? How much do you trust the other end of the pipe? Yeah, so I, I can suggest that, uh, that by default the source will be the the guy that serves like the API gateway in that case, and he will have another sort of option to convey metadata about its original source, like the host name in the case of HTTP or a host cookie or whatever. Uh, but essentially, and then it could potentially be open for interpretation that may you may be creating sort of like a domain name, you know, like the prefix will be the API gateway prefix dot something else, but that will be sort of open to its implementation. So I'm trying to figure out whether we want to limit this PR to just a syntax change or force Louis to go further and say, enhance line 172 to, to make the description a little more crisp. I think it needs to be a little more clear so it won't be ambiguous. And so let's say we can get that, that well, actually, well, let me, so I, go ahead, I, mean, I, I do think that this, like, this resource term ended up confusing a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, so I feel like source is a better stand-in for what we're trying to convey. And so I would suggest, like, you know, like Thomas indicated, that we, like, let's have it be source for now. And then add clarification, additional things yes. with the openness that we might change the term source. Source, right? Yeah. I, I I would agree with that. Yeah, and I, I can take a, a an action item to maybe add some clarity. Um, it doesn't look like examples are very common in here, but I can try to glean from our examples and put those in the conversation. Okay, so hold on a minute. Yeah, I uh, think samples are important here because I think without us looking at concrete stuff. We're all guessing. Yeah. We're not thinking through the little details. Yeah, I'll, I'll give some examples of the conversation about what Google does. It doesn't mean it's the right thing or what will eventually be agreed upon by the standard, but it can at least, uh, I can share my side of the story and others can chime in with their insights from their providers. So Thomas, can I tag you with an action item to create new wording for the definition of source? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I. Do you mind if I also uh, suggest in there a field that I think might be missing? I, I don't have a problem with that. You can try to group things wherever you want. My only suggestion would be to separate things as much as possible because they may get easier to get, they may be easier to get through if they're smaller chunks. Sure, sure. But it's up to you how you want to group it. Yeah, I, I'm really missing the source identity because I believe that either the proxy or the origin uh, you know, it has its own responsibility on authentication, but it may want to convey what's the identity of the person originating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, will yeah I, mean, I, think, I think that would be interesting to see a proposal around that, Euron. I think we got stuck with the like, you know, in these, in these cloud environments where everything is connected to everything else, then it gets hard to sort of figure out what the actual source is, but I'd be really interested in if you have a, a concept that you think would really work. Yeah, um, you know, you think about it in many cases, like if there is an API gateway, it's already doing authentication using tokens or whatever. And then it, it sort of can inject the header with what's the identity that I've authenticated. So the backend function can do authorization based on identity that it sort of trusts the front guy to at least authenticate. And it can be very useful. That's something we, we do, but, and we, we really need it for a bunch of applications to understand who's the identity that's uh, issuing this event. Mm -hmm. Assuming that the transport is, uh, owns the aspect of authentication of that identity. So yeah, we do something similar. So um, we just couldn't come to a, like when we had prior conversations before this came to GitHub, we like 
we couldn't come to like a crisp definition that everybody could agree to. So like if you want to do a draft of something and then people can chime in async, I think that'd be fabulous. Yeah. So you're on, can, if you can take that action to create that issue for the, uh, for the new sure. uh, I, I still need to get used to the GitHub thing. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. So I think what I'm hearing so far is we have a couple action items for follow on either changes or additional properties related to this, but I think I'm hearing more people are okay with the idea of at least changing resource to source for now, even though it may change later. Um, is there any objection then with moving in that direction? In other words, is there any objection to accepting this PR as it stands right now? I mean, I don't really see the value in a change if we don't have agreement on what we're changing and the details of what this is. I mean, it's okay to say we'll change it later, but I just don't see what we gain by, and by doing it until we have more detail. So my interpretation is that while you're right, it still may be ambiguous, at least source is more closer to what people are generally thinking than resource because resource is just too generic of a term. And it's more consistent now with the current description. Yeah, I think we, we can, you know, approve the source chain now and then later we can clarify more what does that mean. Okay. So Dan, are you okay with that? I know it's, it's not perfect, but it's... <laughs> I've said twice that I'm not, but I don't think it matters. So. Well, no, I, I, well, I, I am shooting for consensus here. This is, a, this is one of those situations where is it something you can live with, with, these, with the assumption that we will fix it later? I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, my whole point is if, if, if our assumption is we will fix it later, why take any action now? What are we gaining from the action? Is it, is it just so we feel like we accomplished something or is it because we're moving closer to something or it's because it's I just don't closer understand. to what we mean. So I think the key thing is I saw a lot of questions about resource that were like completely misinterpreting what we were trying to achieve. And so that was the, you know, that was the, the thing, right? Where if, if, even if source isn't precise, it's more in the direction so that people new to reading the spec would get the gist of it. Um, I mean, that said, you know, like, you know, I'm not going to die on my sword on this because I think we still have. I only think the details that we're missing are we're going to tell us if we are right. Like we call it, you could call it uh, Apple for all I care. As long as the details were there, people would know what Apple meant. Without the details, I don't think the name's important. So I, sure, I we, can, that, we can call it source. I think that even without the details, it will stay source. I think the details are not about is it source or uh, resource. Anyway, resource is a bad name. It's about explaining further what kind of source are we referring to, like the origin or origin origin. You know? Well, I think that that's why we need the examples because if it's so, I would like to see. Hey, here's the URI of a of a of a storage object in S3. That, that changed and this is the event and this is what it looks like and without the concrete samples, uh, examples, I don't think we get close to understanding what we're really talking about. Yeah, and, I, and it may be uh, that the, you know, the path within S3 is part of the message object, which is re refer, referred to in the schema uh, and the thing that is the source is actually S3 generated an event telling you something about, uh, about its buckets. That would make more sense to me because then the, there's a lot of metadata which is event origin specific and that will probably be designed into the schema of the of the message. Like if it's a DynamoDB right now, then you have a uh, previous value, current, you know, new, va new value, uh, different records, potentially array of objects that have modified, not a single object that have modified to, you know, coalesce a bunch of events. So just in order to make forward progress, because I don't want to rattle on this one more than we already have. Dan, is your concern strong enough to actually re to raise a, like a formal objection to where the point where you'd, you'd ask for like a vote on this? Or is it something you can just well, sort of hold your nose on? I mean, I feel like Dan has enough of a point that like we should just let Thomas elaborate on the description and have some examples and we do it next time. Like, is it, like if, it, if, if it's generating this much conversation, then like let's just define it better and then name it. Well, that, that's, that was my next point was if, the, if he does, and it's perfectly fine, Dan, if you do, I'm not trying to strong on you, but I just want to make sure because I got at the point now where I'm going to say, okay, if someone wants to make a motion to formally make a vote on this, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm going to defer it till we have, a, you know, either next week's call or we get some other resolution pre presented to us. As long as, as long as we're committed to making a vote on it later, 
because I mean, the whole world is built about around URLs and URIs and no one's ever been confused by that. So the, the, the thought of walking away from something that's been that well established concerns me. So if we're committed to voting on this later, I'm fine with just doing whatever we want today, which is accepting that. It's just, we have to commit to actually following up. I mean, I mean, I agree with the URI approach and I think that I like the nomenclature source. And then, as you saw the model I presented back at our face-to-face -face in November, that basically you have to distinguish, we're always dealing with multiple resources in terms of events. And to me, if you adopt the source terminology, you should adopt a target terminology. So the event always has a source and a target, if nothing else. Okay, so does someone want to make a motion to adopt this? Or do we want to defer it? If no one makes a motion, it's going to be deferred. Can we adopt it and open an, an issue that says that we need to address this and then they'll handle I the second board. that motion. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any objection then to adopting this with the understanding that another issue will be open to to do the follow on work? Okay, not hearing any objection. Who would like that action item? It sounds like uh, if I was already going to be writing the description, you can assign the, the bug to me. Okay. Whoops. Can't type. Yeah, it actually it almost sounds like the exact one you already have, doesn't it? Um, is it, it, is it, you... is it materially different than your other AI? <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's that the name of this attribute is to be discussed after the prior, after the okay. other thing. Okay. Um, oops. Okay. To reconsider the name of source. That's what I was looking for, reconsider. I knew it was re-something. Thank you. All right, excellent. Okay, thank you guys very much. Um, and thank you guys for your help for getting through those six issues. That, that's, that's really great. Um, Austin, this has been lingering, I think, for maybe for two weeks now. I wanted to make sure we talked about it today since you put it on the agenda two weeks ago and didn't get to it. Sure, yes. Um, you know, and since then, I'm still feeling like we're not we're not quite ready to start talking about this, uh, but the, the topic was, you know, at what point do we start approaching some, building some kind of tooling to help support the, uh, the specification so that people can start um, using it today and integrating it with other projects uh, within the ecosystem. Um, I don't think we're quite, quite there yet. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine with kind of deferring this conversation topic for a little bit further. Okay, just let me know when you want to bring it back up. I don't have a problem with that. Um, Doug, one, one point, if we sort of started moving over the metadata, one thing I'm, I'm trying to figure out, uh, we placed data in the sort of the first section and then the content type is sort of a backlog. If you have data, how do you know how to decipher it if you don't know it's a sort of serialization mechanism? So, so you're on? Yeah. Can you do me a favor and, and open an issue or a pull request with that proposed change? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so. By the way, regarding the implementation, I, we can take a stab of creating like, a, I, we already have like an emulator for, uh, for what we've done for our serverless. So I can take the emulator and, uh, and create at least in Go like a stub to generate just like uh, those classes and uh, test. Uh, so you can emulate function calls and all that. Okay, that, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I, I, I know our, our company would be interested in um, contributing uh, to that. So, I mean, maybe we could just start drafting out or writing out some issues of some of the libraries or supporting tooling that we'd like to build, um, post those in issues and then figure out who wants to collaborate on them. Who was uh, talking? Uh, Austin? Yes. Well, I'll send you the link of the, you know, our, our test tub. It's really small code and we can just go and change the interfaces to uh, whatever we, we define in the spec. I'll send you a link. Cool. Great. Okay. Um, before we move to the next item, just want to remind people, if you have not done so already, uh, check and make sure your name is in the attendee list at the beginning of the agenda doc. Because um, we will try to do the roll call again for latecomers. But if your name isn't there, I'm going to forget to call on you. 
Now, Austin, next on the agenda was the future work items. Would you like to discuss that today or do you want to defer that for another time? I think that's up to the group here. Um, you know, right since the beginning of this year, we've, um, we've decided to focus on cloud events and get the specification off the ground. Standardization discussion around um, the serverless architecture. Uh, so now we're making progress on cloud events. Everything's, um, uh, everything's looking good. Um, at, you know, at what point should we start talking about some of the standardizing some of the other things um, like a common function signature or common FAS uh, API? Um, you know, we don't have to get into this today, but if anyone has some strong feelings about, you know, when we should start considering this stuff, um, please feel free to bring them up. Yeah, so one, I, as I was looking through this or considering this earlier today, I realized that it seems like most of the proposals that people are going to suggest for future work items are probably going to either expand the scope of our working group, I mean, of the specification, or potentially kick off a brand new working group. Um, and if that's the case, I'm thinking maybe what we should do is, aside from maybe people adding things to that work item list if they want, but what they really should do is open up a proposal in the WG serverless working group directory, because we have a directory there, a couple proposals, and maybe people should put their proposals in there and, and hash out, uh, you know, or work, work through discussions with other people to formalize the proposal. And then when they feel like it's ready enough and solid enough, then they can bring it to this group on a weekly call for us to consider it. Because um, I don't think we want to necessarily get into the brainstorming session on this call itself. But at least then if you have a doc in the repo someplace, then people can hash on that repo there or, you know, inside there, put a pointer to a Google Doc, however you guys want to work it. But overall, I was wondering whether we should just use the proposals during the original repo as the way to sort of get those conversations going. What do you guys think? Sounds good to me. Sounds great. Okay. And Austin, if, if prior to a proposal, you want to do an issue in the serverless WG, then we could like, then, you know, that would raise awareness that you're working on the proposal or something like that. Yeah, that's true. And, and I can definitely, obviously, we can put something on the agenda here, if nothing else, as Sarah said, to raise awareness to it, just so it's not, you know, missed by people in the flood of GitHub comments. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so that Austin doesn't spend a lot of time writing a proposal and somebody's like, yeah, but I had a slightly different idea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would never happen, though, but yes. Okay. And also send them to the mailing list, right, about that. Yeah, that'd be good, too. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try to put something down. So I'll try to write up a doc someplace that talks about how we want to deal with uh, future work items and put down all the logistics of making sure people are aware of it. I'll put that someplace. Sounds good. All right. Okay. So doc, yes, uh, Kathy. Yeah, I'm thinking about you know um, working on uh, um, proposing a like uh, service um, uh, application model. Um, should I start like on the Google Doc or should I start? Start on this GitHub. Yeah, um, tell you what, why don't you wait until I get that process defined a little, where we that way everybody follows the same pattern. And chances are it's going to be kind of similar to what I described here, which is either open up an issue or open up a, a pull request, add a document to the proposal dir in our in our original Git repo, the serverless repo. Um, but let me let me work on the details, and hopefully before next week, we'll have that in place, and then you can just follow those. That, that you can follow that process. Does that sound okay? Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Or oh, should we put that in here, the future work items here, so that you know if other people have uh, similar ideas, like Sarah suggested, we can work together. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point of the process, right? Is to make sure people can put their ideas someplace and other people can find it, so they can all collaborate and not do duplicate effort. Yes. Yeah, I think we also want to have discussions around security. Not that I have a pr uh, proposal for how to secure serverless functions, but maybe we'll start the discussion and and create sort of action items around what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yep, all falls into the same category, yep. Okay, so moving on, I wanted to, so I figured we might have some time, I wanna talk about some issues, but I wanna change the order here slightly. Uh, Sarah, I wanna talk about yours first. Um, so let me bring up the issue while you start talking to it. Great, yeah. Um, so basically, this comes from like a bunch of pro uh, questions in the um, spec that I felt like came from people who may not have clarity on like what we're actually trying to achieve and how the spec fits into a whole lot of things that we haven't defined yet. And so 
we're in the situation where there's a lot of working systems that use these specific kind of events. And so I was attempting to explain that and I started to write a more complex system diagram and then I needed some words. So I made a very simple presentation that um, just defines a few simple terms that if we could just agree on what terms we want to use, then that would help draw a bigger diagram, which I think then we could then, that would help us all be like, are we talking about the same thing and, and um, get somewhere? Um, so the first part of this comes from the spec itself, right? Like that we, uh, that the event is commonly used colloquially to mean the data that represents the thing that happened. So this was, um, you know, sort of prior to getting this into GitHub, we said, well, there's an occurrence, which is the thing that happened. And then there's the event, which is this specification. And, um, and so, um, and then sort of like, I decided, I talked about like some of the use cases, which are, there's a lot of stuff around like, you know, somebody makes an HTTP or RPC call and that changes some state on the server, which generates one of these events or you know, there's also been a lot of conversations about like the IoT sensor situation. And we also wanted to call out that like, it could be a non-event, right? It could be time passing with something not happening. All of these things are in scope. And that, um, and that some of the stuff that the spec discusses is there's like sort of context and data. Um, but the idea is that like every occurrence is uniquely identified by this data um, that describes the event. Um, so that's really just a preamble that covers what the spec is in, what, what, what's in the spec for the new terms, um, which I pulled the source term from the change that I liked, right? Um, that, but this is like, but then I think I, you couldn't talk about it with like, what, it, what happens after the event, like, there's another side of it, right? Which is, is outside of the scope of the current spec. So the way that the current spec is written is that there's this event that then using things that we have not diagrammed yet can be bound to, I use the word action from OpenWhisk. Um, you know, Amazon calls these handler, everybody calls these things different things, but I thought action was like sort of a nice generic term um, for like what you, like there's the, the events that are emitted or generated and then there's another thing that um, the developer who is not the developer of the source and may not even be the developer of the action can you know, bind together and to, for the event to trigger an action. Um, so I just wanted to propose like, are these words that are good? Is this a reasonable sort of description of how um, we're doing things? And then, yeah, and also acknowledging that like, the, a, we are all agreeing that this specification currently doesn't cover a protocol where the event is transmitted. Um, and there's like a whole bunch of requirements that are currently like sort of outside of the spec. Um, so I wanted to sort of first ask like, does everybody agree this is the model? This is the fundamental model we're saying and you know, can we agree on some terms that we can use consistently to then get to a more, the sort of more complex diagram that we all wanna make? Yeah, I, th I think this speaks to the model I've been asking for. <laughs> I think it does as well, Sarah. I'm a huge fan of consolidating on terms. Um, I think we should continue to add these into a single kind of glossary section in the specification because um, it will greatly uh, improve alignment. Although action is outside of what, like, to Euron's point, or earlier, I think it was Euron who was saying like, oh yeah, we want functions that we, like what the action is, is outside of the scope of the event spec as currently written. Like how it's transported. Uh, I, I, made the, I made the distinction between uh, the protocol and the message, what you have here, like E, and then the, uh, I think the protocol usually is not used by the consumer. The consumer doesn't really care about the address of Kafka. He cares about the message. Good point. And then to expand on that point, um, another one that I think Sarah was trying to make is that the source also doesn't care about the action. Um, that one of the power of cloud events is that you can have these loosely coupled systems. You can expose the ability to observe an occurrence 
without knowing every consumer of your action. Yeah. So Sarah, in terms of next steps on this, um, I want to make sure that as we go forward on something like this, which I think is great, that we don't necessarily have to worry about keeping two documents in sync or them getting out of sync is more, more the worry. How do you, what, what do you want us to do in the short term on this? Is it just to make sure the spec gets the right terminology so that you can echo them properly in this doc that you're producing? Or you know, what, do you, what are you looking for people to do? Well, I actually went ahead and um, based on the conversation in the um, issue and made a markdown version of this so that if we, um, so if you go look at the markdown thing, so that it's easy that if we change the terms in the spec, we can just, like it's in text rather than in, I mean, it's also in, I don't, I'll have to think about like somebody like this picture. I don't know how to do pictures in Markdown very effectively. Um, so it has a ping in it, right? That would have to be changed. But um, the goal would be that like this, if we decide we're going to name things differently, we could then just ha like, ha this is the sort of bigger context that, um, like doesn't need to be in the spec, I think. Sarah, so this is like a, almost kind of like a guide that people can read. That's not as kind of in depth and technical as a specification. This just kind of explains kind of what we're doing and you know, the concepts involved. And exactly. And so it would it would explain the terms that the spec uses in less precise language, right? That are mm -hmm. consistent, but like also address things that are outside of the scope of the spec. But not like, I don't want this to be exhaustive. Like, I think this should be like a few pages max, right? The goal is just so that if somebody is coming to this fresh, right? They're like, oh, cloud events. I really want to do something that has nothing to do with what we're doing because they do something that they call with the word event that they could like read an intro doc and be like, oh, that's not what we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna go away. Or like, oh, okay, I understand the context. Now I'm gonna dive into the spec. So Sarah, would it be possible to reword this slightly so that it looks a little less specish and, and put something at the top that says, we're gonna use these terms as defined in the spec, pointed to the spec. And then the rest of it is just prose that talk about those concepts without actually trying to define it. Because I get a little nervous when I see things like event colon and then a definition of it, because that's asking for things to get out of sync and then PRs to get them back in sync and it's just going to be a maintenance nightmare. But, it, but talking about things in abstract sense, the way you described it, I think that makes perfect sense. So if you look at the sense of the bigger picture. Um, well, how about if I like link to the actual definitions in, in the spec? Because I do like if we rename something in the spec, we should rename it here. Agreed, and but I, I don't, and I think a, a rename probably won't happen that often, but a slight yeah. wording change that might happen fairly often, and those are the things I worry about missing. Okay, so why don't I give an intro that this is really about the, uh, with a pointer to the spec, and then um, and then I will link to definitions in the spec, and I'll make sure they have like a yeah an anchor. Okay. Yep, and I like that because yeah, I, I don't like repeated words. Yeah, exactly. Okay, is this the readme? No, this would be a new doc, I believe, right? Yeah, we were thinking that the other action item I have, but I didn't get to, is to take um, the references out of the spec that are like um, the like the things that are the current events, like the um, uh, the, the the cloud event like things that Amazon and um, Google and others like started like were feeders into this. Um, and so the idea is I just came up with this directory name about to be like, this is where we can like put stuff that is the context for this. Um, I mean, this could go in the readme, but I think it, it would be better to link it from the readme so that we can also link things like, I think Rachel last week suggested that we have like a table of contents in the readme. So it would be like a link to the concepts and a link to the how to start, you know, how to contribute and the working group meetings. Sure, and we could optimize all that stuff as we go along. I think the most important thing is just to start getting this down and getting yep. our story straight. Yep, agreed. Okay, I'm gonna have to- <clears throat> Can I ask one question about the content here? Um, I'm a uh, new attendee here, so I, I don't have a lot of the context that unfortunately y'all are you're all talking about. Um, in, 
when, when I think of, of eventing, uh, this, this diagram makes me think that I should only make events for things that have specific actions. And I'm, I'm curious, is the definition that we're, we're trying to build up uh, of things that are rare and you should only event something that you're like, this is going to go and do a thing, um, or is something like, I'm just going to store it, uh, sufficient uh, description of an action. Uh, and if it is, can we clarify what action means there a little bit and that it's not like necessarily a notification or uh, make a decision based on this information, but just uh, handle the event? Yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I think that's a good point. Um, I think the, the, to clarify what I think I mean. And can, I've Sarah, got... can you do it like 10 seconds? Because we're out of time. Um, yeah, so I think that the idea is that you wouldn't, the, the generator of the event doesn't know what the action is at the time they're generating the event. Um, so maybe they just call it consumer and then you're not limiting it to actions. Okay, I'm gonna so have to call time I'll, here. I'll, I'll do I'll, some I'll, rewording I'll, based on the feedback. Okay, yes, thank you. I don't mean to cut this off, but I do want to get the roll call back to make sure people are attended or marked down appropriately and we are out of time. I want to be respectful of people. But Ben, please, if we don't get it covered, bring it up next week. So let me just quickly go through the roll call again. Joe Sherman from Microsoft, do you hear? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, Garish from SolarWinds? Yeah, hey. Klaus from SAP? Yes, I am. And Vile, you here? Vile? What about Michael from JP Morgan? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, Hong Zhang? Yeah, this is me. This is Kathy. You can remove that. Just the same name. Wait, is, same Hong, is Hong here or not? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. This is Kathy. It's the same Oh, that's, oh that's Kathy. I'm sorry, Doi. Sorry. And what about, uh -huh. David, what about David P? I don't know who David P is, but you were, I saw, saw you on the participant list. Okay. Is there anybody on the call who does not have an asterisk next to their name in the attendee list? Uh, yeah, this is Louis. Can you add my name? Louis Fourier. Yep, got it. Thank you. Anybody cool. else? All right, cool. Thank you guys very much. This is a very productive meeting. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Thanks. guys. Thanks. Bye. We're using RFC keywords. We've got our roadmap in place. Everything's coming together really well. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye guys. Bye.